Okay, so next problem, problem number 11. Here it is right here. So, yeah, 20 by 20 grid, four numbers along the diagonal being marked red. Product of these numbers is this. What is the greatest product of four adjacent numbers in the same direction? So you can go up, you can go down, you can go left, you can go right, or you can go diagonally. So diagonally right to left, diagonally left to right, like going down. Um, so you've got two diagonal directions. So yeah, got to find the, the largest product. Now, I've actually already input this grid into uh, the code. So the bit of code you're going to see, this is all I've done so far. Um, if anyone's got a better way to get that grid in a code, um, I'd love to hear it rather than just sitting here inputting all these numbers and commas and stuff. Obviously, I copy pasted the numbers in, then I went through and put all the commas in. But what I've done here is I've defined main, I've then created a variable called grid, which is a list, but it's a list of lists. So you'll see if we uh, if we call grid, oops, sorry, if we print grid and then we print the first in uh, sorry the zeroth index so the first line this should be um, you see we actually get the first line so we get 8 2 22 so on so on get all this over here so now if I actually print out the zeroth element of that line because this is a list of lists I can call the zeroth element of the zeroth list um, and you see we get 8 so we do get this first one so what this lets us do is take the grid and just call any element we like from it um, so yeah this is obviously important if we're going to be working with the grid um, so yeah hopefully that makes sense to you, you can actually make a list of lists and if we wanted we could even have lists inside these lists um, Python's really good like that so yeah let's go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get rid of this make a bit of space try and keep this like up out of the way and not let it get in the way. Um, so we're going to need something that keeps track of the, the largest product so far. So largest so far that's going to be equal to um, it's going to be equal to zero. We currently don't have a largest so far. Now we're also going to need the current product. This can be similar to when we did the uh, the largest product in a series thing. Uh, just a little bit more complicated in terms of how we find the the four characters that we and uh, the four numbers that we're multiplying together. So we're going to need a current. So current is equal to one. We're going to do the same thing where we multiply by each number. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go find the uh, the largest product in a series video I did. Probably like number six, problem six, something like that. Um, might be problem eight or nine. I have no idea. To be honest, it's it's around them numbers. Uh, go have a look for it. So, current equals one. Now, we're going to need something to loop over. Uh, so, what we're going we're gonna to need to do, we're going to need to loop over all the ones like going across the right. Um, very similar to how we did in the series, the series thing, except obviously we don't wrap on this. We don't do like 91 times 8 times 49 times 49. Um, we just end, this would be the last number of 4 we do and then this would be the next 4 we do. So we're going to need something to check all the right ones, then we're going to need something to check all the down ones. Um, we don't need to check right and then left, obviously because they're just the same thing in reverse. We just only need to check one of the directions. So we can go right, we can go down, then we don't need to go up. We've got right, we've got down, then we're going to need diagonal this way, and then we're going to need diagonal um, this way down here. So the diagonal ones will be a little bit more complicated. We'll start with the right one first. We'll try and get something working for that. So we're going to say for i in range and then we want to loop over the entire grid. So if I print out um, print len grid so that comes out with 20 because it's a list of 20 lists uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we've got 20 lists. Now if I print out the length of grid 0, so what's the length of that list? 
you see we also get 20 so this is where we can get our dimensions from see if we ever want to uh, make this grid like a different size or something um, yeah not sure why you would want to do that but maybe you would so what we're going to do is we're going to say for i in range len grid so this is going to be 20 for ours um, now we're going to say for j in range then we want len of grid um, grid i so what this is going to do if if I now print, whoops, if I now print, um, I guess I could print I and J, but is what I'll do is I'll print, um, I'll pass here. That pass just like means you're not putting anything there. It just means I'm not going to get an error. I'm now going to print out the len read I thing. Um, just to show what this actually does. So you see this is giving us 20 20s, this is telling us the length of the first one is 20, the length of the second one is 20, the length of the third one is 20. So if I had an extra number in here, so instead of 65 I had 65 then 66. Now you see one of these will go to 21, so you see this one here goes to 21. This means that our grid doesn't now have to be um, 20 by 20 doesn't even have to be like 21 by 21 or anything like that we could just add numbers randomly throughout the grid and it should in theory still work um, so yeah hopefully this uh, makes sense so we're gonna say current uh, times equals then we're gonna say grid I want the the first list and then J. Um, no, that, this isn't right. So we need another variable. We need um, length of product. So this can be equal to four for us because we're multiplying together four different numbers. So now we're going to need four k in range length of product then we're going to say um, current times equals red i j but then j is going to be plus k because uh, hold on just print current here and as soon as we've done one we're going to break out uh, that should work so what this is telling us is so it's going to take the first list it's going to take the first element of the first list and then we're going to say take that first element and multiply it by current and um, once you've done that iterate this k value so this is going to then go to 1 now multiply by the next element so that's where the plus k comes in so we're going to be multiplying by this 2 then we're going to multiply by the 22 then the 97 uh, once we've done all the k's we're going to print out the current uh, sorry we're going to break in this case but we would iterate j so we'd then start at 2 then go 22 then 97 then 38 um, so the idea is we're, we're stepping along each way um, yeah so this this should get all the right to left so what I'm going to do I'm actually going to get rid of these breaks uh, break I think I've showed this before just obviously breaks out the loop that was why I was using them just because I didn't want to go all the way through um, Okay, so list index out of range. Now, the reason this is out of range... Okay, we're getting huge numbers as well. The reason we're getting huge numbers is because I've never reset the value of current. Uh, so what I need to do down here is if current is bigger than largest so far, um, largest so far is equal to current, and we need current 
equal to 1. Now if I start that again, that should get rid of that problem. So you see we're getting all these different numbers. Now, this index is out of range. Now the reason that's happening, I think, uh, I'm not going to bother counting all these, but I would imagine it's because we get into say like 77, it's going 77 times 91 times 8 and it's trying to get the next element and the next element is obviously not there so what we're going to say is for j in range len grid i minus length of product now does that solve that error? it does so when we get to the end of that we're going to say print largest so far so this number right here should be our largest so far. Um, I'm obviously not going to go check all this by hand, but if I get rid of this print current, so I'm not doing it constantly, and I put it, um, I'll put it right here, and we'll get a lot less of them. And I might actually be able to check which one's the biggest. So obviously we're just going to look at the first digit. And we're going to count the number of digits. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight digits. So we're looking for eight digit numbers starting in four. So this one's a seven digit. So we've got an eight digit here, but starting one. More eight digits. One, two, uh, we've got five, but that's a seven digit. Oh, wow, it's a lot more than I actually thought it was. Yeah, definitely not doing this by hand. Okay, so. I think it's pretty safe to assume that that's right, that is actually the biggest number. Um, that number there is the biggest number of consecutive ones, uh, that's the only direction we've done so far, we haven't done down, we haven't done diagonal. So what I could do is write new for loops for them all. Um, probably best to do that because then it will keep the code clean. So what I'm thinking is I'll just copy paste the code and instead of it being for left and right, this will be for down now. So this is where our uh, our k value now moves to here, I think. Now I'm going to comment out these prints because I don't need them anymore. Um, now our largest so far was 484 it started with, I'm going to see if that changes, it might not change. Ah, and um, I need to change, so right here we don't need to minus the length of product off there anymore. We need to minus the length of product off of there. Hopefully you understand why I just did that. So it has changed, it went up slightly. Um, so down there must be a better set of numbers to multiply together. Now hopefully you understand what I just did, I've just switched the indexes so now instead of iterating along the J direction which is going to push us all along the lines, we're iterating along the I uh, direction which is going to push us down the lines. So hopefully that makes sense um, and then I moved this length of product because obviously we're now messing with I's rather than J's so we need to change the the range for the eyes rather than the range of the J's to stop pushing like out of bounds down here. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So there's down done. Now the diagonal ones are going to be a little bit trickier. So what do we need to do for the diagonals? So if if we focus on the first one we're going to do is go on from like the 8 to the 49, 31, 23, so top left to bottom right. Now to do that we're going to need this minus length of product thing. Um, we're going to need that on both these I think because we don't want to be pushing out the bottom or the right. Um, pretty sure that is what we need. Now. I'm also pretty sure that if we just add the K right here, it'll actually work because K is going to push us 
along with this one and down with this one so it'll push us along and then down um, so that that should definitely work if I run this now no errors and you see our number didn't actually change so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just comment out um, these bits here the triple quotation marks lets you do like a multi-line comment rather than just doing the hashtag where it just does one line uh, just so you can comment out whole blocks of code so now if I run that you see we do actually get a number this is the largest product of the diagonal that we've just done so I'm pretty confident that code's working um, so yeah there's the next bit done now we need this one more time because we need the other diagonal done so this one's a little bit trickier now instead of so this one was top left to bottom right now we're gonna have to go top right to bottom left which means we start here and then we're trying to go out of bounds immediately so rather than going from length length of grid minus length of product sorry like these ones um, this length of product thing needs moving completely it needs to be a range with an initial value like this so I'm just going to do this and I'll try to explain it afterwards so we're now going to start our i and j at the length of product um, is that right? no so this, this uh, the j one is right I think but Wow, this is confusing. So what I want to do is I want to start at 97, and I want to go down to 99, down to 49, down to 52, and then I want to go along to 38, down to 40, down to 31, down to 70. So I still want to be going down the grid, but I want to be going left instead of right. Now, my first index the I one is the going down, so we still want to be going down, so we still want the I to be the same as it was. So this thing right here needs a uh, putting back to minus length of product. So that there should work, um, and then we just mess with these K values right here. So I still needs to be plus K because we're still going down. This time, this needs to be minus k so we go backwards now I'm hoping that works and you see we get 7060674 and now if I look at the answer um, see that is actually the answer so it did work quite happy with that, I'm quite surprised that worked so quickly um, so what I'm going to do now since we've got the answer, if that, if that was all you were after um, then we're done um, but I'm just going to quickly have, a, have another look through the code because I was thinking you might be able to combine these since we're looping over like I and J and whatnot. Um, you might have been able to combine all these, but I'm thinking since we're going over different ranges on each one, probably best to just leave them as they are. Um, probably best to keep them all separate. Um, can't really think of good way to combine them because if we combine them then we're going to have to take into account when we're going off the like out of bounds of the list uh, we're going to have to like tell it we're going out of bounds like stop now which you definitely could do that but I don't know probably more hassle than it's worth since it already works it already gives us the answer um, I'm pretty happy with that we'll just keep it as is so let's just put us all these gaps So yeah, there's the answer if you're after it. Um, hopefully you understood how and why it was working. Um, this is the first time we've used like lists in lists and using like clever sorts of indexing like this. Um, definitely get your head around doing this because I know there's a lot of other problems on the Project Isla site where you do need to like be indexing different things based on position and just understand how it's working. Um, don't worry about it too much because obviously I'll be going over this in other videos but just try and understand it so yeah th thanks for watching um, if you want to see more subscribe if you like the video like it and I will see you in the next video thanks